Good morning, everyone. This is Food is a Conversation Alumni Edition. This is the 15th session. I'm so excited. We started this um, series a few weeks ago um, to introduce all of the people in our ecosystem who attended any of the educational programs organized by the Future Food Institute, like myself. And it could be the Food Innovation Master Program or the summer schools, or now the very new um, edition is um, the boot camps um, organized by um, with FAO. And I am waiting for my partner for today, who actually logged in with her private account. So am I dialing you in with that? <laughs> so um, you will uh, hear a bit uh, of a familiar name of, um, of a project today, Edible Issues. Um, the very first person who we um, interviewed um, during these alumni editions was Anusha Murthy. And uh, she is running a weekly newsletter um, with Elizabeth York, in India and they are working on um, creating a sustainable food system over there and researching um, a lot, connecting people, organizing meetups and um, so I'm just waiting for Elizabeth to actually log in with the right account. Yes, okay. Um, so let me add her. So while um, this is loading, um, these conversations happen twice a week. And uh, one of them is on Tuesday, the other one on Thursday. Hi, perfect. I can see you. I can also hear you. Can you hear me well? I can hear you, yes. Okay, perfect. Because we had a bit of a checkup before. Um, if you don't know, uh, monsoon season is starting in India and there are some connectivity issues sometimes. So we already need to excuse you if something happens during the next 30 minutes. Um, we will make sure that if this is not working out this time, we will, we will catch up another day. Um, so back to the, the, um, the series. So it happens twice a week, once on Thursday evening and, uh, no, uh, Tuesday evening and Thursday morning um, to cover different time zones because as you can imagine the alumni is spread all over the world and um, these conversations if you don't have the time to listen until the end or you will just join later they will be available on IGTV and also the first few sessions now on uh, on our YouTube channel and I myself very um, much enjoyed these conversations. I actually learned so much about people who I might have met or I worked with over the last few years, but I didn't really know their stories. So this is all about introducing you to people, um, their stories, how they connected to the Future Food Network and how is their local food system? What are the projects, what they are working on? It might be not necessarily food related, it's just their stories. So it's a very casual conversation. I encourage you to, to post your questions and we will make sure that we answer them um, throughout the conversation. And um, now uh, let me give the stage to Elizabeth York, who is based in Bangalore. And now I just actually told the information I wanted you to <laughs> answer. <laughs> so, all right, Elizabeth, please tell us a bit about yourself. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Elizabeth York and uh, I am based in Bangalore, as Julia said. Um, I'm a cook by profession. Uh, I studied in culinary school in Manipal, a small coastal town uh, in Karnataka. And I went on to cook in restaurant kitchens and hotel kitchens. And then I landed up at the food innovation program <laughs> with Julia. <laughs> so how was that? How did you find the program? What was your drive and motivation to come to Italy and join that crazy 12 months dancing with ambiguity? <laughs> it was definitely crazy. Um, I think while I was cooking throughout the years, um, I kind of started to uh, learn and see things uh, in the Indian food system. And I started to get more curious about where my food was coming from and how it came into the kitchen and and what happened to it after whether it was in terms of waste or uh, or even just what consumers how consumers perceived what dishes they wanted to order or what uh, how what was their relationship to food 
um and as i kept looking and searching i i did stages in in restaurants i baked in bakeries around the world i was really really curious just to understand Uh, and that's when i met uh, simona grande who is also a, a food innovation program alumni coincidentally she was in bangalore she came to the restaurant where i worked in and we had a conversation and she told me about this amazing program first i didn't believe that it actually existed <laughs> um but she told me that that i mean to learn about global the global food system from in a very dynamic very hands on um very collaborative way i mean this w- was a really great program and so i applied for a visa book tickets and flew to italy in a matter of just a couple of months but yeah yeah that was um such a nice story in january i remember it was so cold still and i think that was one of the things you guys had to adjust to a tiny bit um but what was very impressive for me from the beginning when we met that you already had so many different experiences and you actually had this view of not only looking at it from the cook perspective but from the consumer perspective and in order to close this loop and basically deepen your your full understanding you actually joined the um the research group for the global mission about uh, circular economy and um So as um you guys if you don't know we actually published books um from our research after the trip um you can find them under foodshapers.org and um so now what are the most important outcomes what you identified during this time what was your what was the reason why you actually picked this topic instead of the other three and uh and how did this evolve and how do you use these learnings now um so this the idea of circular economy uh, just sustainability uh that was one of the topics that we had um of research which i felt at that point of time was the closest to me and what i had kind of been looking into in the past so when i worked in bangalore at the restaurant uh it was a small restaurant in uh, indranagar uh, we used to try and uh the focus was on food and ingredients of course but it was also on how can we use things to the maximum capacity how do we care about the food that comes in in a way that we aren't just binning things you know um and we also started looking outside towards the community so i remember there was a time where i'd go down in my in the break to uh, the lo- the brewery and pick up spent grain and and um, uh, spent yeast and bring it back and we'd make all our breads in house from that uh and we'd also uh use things like tomato skin peels after bla- tomato skins after blanching it we dehydrate it um we'd fry it and make it into chips so uh we at one point of time we had pig ears that we usually thrown away and and all these kind of awful on the menu trying to just get people to understand food or understand the value of food and and so when i picked the topic circular economy to dive into that was it it was the value of food and what it was to me but that was on the produce and product side what i was also really interested in and what i had experienced while i was working was the environment of care that um, my chef chef zerks is he 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 kind of taught us for staff and for people so there was a continuous learning in our kitchen and not maybe there were two of us who came from culinary backgrounds but most of uh, most of our staff uh came from i mean uh, they were they came from agrarian backgrounds they had no idea of what the restaurant industry was like uh and the idea of teaching them showing them so i remember there was one time that um uh, chef zerks he went uh, to modena actually and um, this was back in 2016 and he came back with a bottle of balsamico from uh and uh, we actually watched a video together with the staff to kind of just tell them this ingredient is not something that we're just using because it tastes good and it's amazing but this is how it is made this is how the people understand or value that ingredient and we bring it here to use it in our kitchen because it's not just delicious but it has a whole beautiful story and a process and 
you know, we, we want to share that also with you, not just that, oh, it's an expensive ingredient and, you know, use just a little bit of it. So I think the value of food and the idea of circular economy, I was really keen to explore more. And um, uh, what we actually discovered, so one of the really, for us, the really fun things about working together is me and my other colleagues, which is Bernadette, Diana and Farah, we were all from, uh, we, we were all from uh, countries that we realized because we were from uh, Colombia, Jordan, the Philippines, and I was from India. And we realized that uh, these practices of the idea of circular economy was already something that we we did or we had within our traditions and practices. So by putting a label to it, what did it mean in um, the Western world, if I can say? But what did it mean to for other people who were just discovering something like this or or bringing it to importance? And also, more importantly, what did it mean to us in our home countries when we went went back and started talking about circular economy in this very new mindset uh, or framework? Um, and yeah, and it was really amazing working with these girls. We got to go to restaurants to see how they were using their food waste. We got to uh, dive into food waste apps all around the world. So this project that Julia is talking about took us to 12 different cities around the world, right from China to the US and uh, and every place in between. And it was really amazing. But to get to meet these people working with the topic of circular economy with sustainability in food, I think that was really great. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so during the time together, very early in February, if I'm not mistaken, um, you joined forces with Anusha, who I mentioned before, and um, <laughs> started Edible Issues. And I remember we were the first audience um, for the newsletter. And now it, it actually grew into something which is which is a major part of um, the the Indian food system in terms of network, and you are creating all these um, meetups and conversations. So how is your, because you, to you come from a very different background. So Anusha is an engineer and you are a cook or you were a cook. Um, <laughs> how, how is your perspective of this project? How did you evolve um, through the last years? Um, yeah, so Edible Issues started in the second month, almost, yeah, the right away when we started the food innovation uh, program. And it was so Anusha and I were the only two Indians in, in in the batch and we were having all of these classes around uh, the future of food systems and um, and uh, hi Anna, Anna is here, <laughs> this is cool. So we were having all of these conversations about uh, food systems in a very uh, global perspective and it made us both reflect on to what do we know about the Indian food system, how do we collect this information and how do we interpret it? And uh, and I think that for us, the the idea of interpretation from very two different perspectives was really interesting because, as you said, Anusha is an engineer from an engineering background, and I was a cook, so we came from very two different worlds. And um, and yeah, so we just started collecting news. You guys were our test lab rats, mm -hmm. and I think. One of even, I mean, one of the things that Anusha and I were actually talking about the other day was the most fun we had was during this whole interpretation process, because the whole idea of Edible Issues was to facilitate collaboration and thought for someone else's food system per se. So you're looking, if you are a cook, you're looking at the food system, maybe from maybe a scientist perspective of what's happening in food science, or you're looking at it from a retail perspective to understand, even though it directly doesn't connect with your line of work. But so when Anusha and I, our favorite parts of doing these newsletters was actually to sit together, look through, skim through all the hundreds of articles that we get, and actually have that conversation on why do we think this is important and and how do we think this is going to shape uh shape the indian food system and i think those conversations were super enlightening because not only do you learn about what's happening on the ground but you actually understand what you can do uh to probably make something uh to uh, what you can do in your field of work to kind of make that change that can influence or help someone else's field grow in terms of research or stuff like that so, yeah. so I remember we also had this, your very first uh, public 
um, event was actually during the global mission in Mumbai and uh, Bombay Canteen. That was very nice. And then I, I kind of um, see that as a symbol of you came to a journey and there was already a tangible outcome of you coming to Italy and actually connecting with another person from India, but bringing back all that knowledge, what you learned to your local context and try to make a change there. So about India and projects <laughs> to change and show people um, existing cultures and, um, and f uh, food practices. You also have another uh, initiative that you are um, actually supporting um, pretty much, uh, which is called Food Forward India. And I remember last year, was it already last year? No, this year. Oh, sorry. So this year, beginning of this year, it seems to be like, yeah. Never. <laughs> anyway, so this year um, when I uh, had the chance to actually visit you, um, beginning of the year, you were all busy because you just planned this trip um, with, uh, with the initiative. So could you please tell us a bit more? Yeah, so um, earlier last, I mean, late last year, I got an opportunity to join this really great initiative um, working with Indian food and food culture called Food Forward India. So Food Forward India was set up by Chef Garima Arora, who is India's only Michelin star woman chef. Uh, her restaurant is in Bangkok. And uh, the idea of this initiative came about when she was asked, uh, what do you see as the future of Indian food culture, Indian food? Um, and she said, well, uh, I, I don't know unless I've kind of explored it myself or understand, understood the present or the past. So the idea of this initiative was just to explore, appreciate, understand, document Indian food and food culture in, um, in, in this very exploratory way. Uh, and this, this has been really great because, um, we we get to i mean before obviously this lockdown and this situation uh we we get to travel uh to places uh that are uh, and and meet people in their communities so our first trip we we did was exploring the state of telangana where we 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 visited a village called pedamaduru which was a a village where they tap toddy, which is palm wine. So we spent a day with them understanding the process, understanding what food cultures are, what do they mean for them, what um, uh, what what the process means to them and in, in a very, um, yeah, in a very community-spirited way. Mm -hmm. uh, we also then spent some time with the Chenchu tribes in the Nalamala forest to understand that, that perspective. So looking at rural perspectives, tribal perspectives of food, and then also coming back into the city because that is where all the conversation and noise about food and restaurants and where this industry seems to be growing and and having this conversation and sharing these this information with with people and and understanding what they want from their own food system so in a way it's facilitating this thought process about how they themselves want to strengthen their food community or strengthen their own food culture because i think I mean, this is something that I found a lot that we love to talk about food, but in terms of studying food um, and stuff like that, it, it's not really common. And studying food cultures and studying food traditions, that's not something that, um, you know, I mean, just being a cook uh, is actually just coming to light because when I joined, when I started cooking and when I joined culinary school, I still had people tell me, or oh, you want to be like a cook, like, you know, it, it was not a, it was not a professional thing to do. So, but this is really great because we're seeing not just with Food Forward India, where we're seeing so many other initiatives growing that are talking about cultures and talking about traditions uh, and kind of like disrupting this stereotype typical way that people see uh, Indian food, which is sometimes restricted to naan and, and butter chicken or like turmeric lattes that we saw so much of in Italy. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, it tells a new story. And, and then that, of course, and there are so many in the people in the Indian food system doing this now. So it's really empowering to be able to join that community. 
um and that also tells the story of how as uh, or makes us understand our own cultures as we progress and that definitely rubs off on the food system right so we pick traditions and i know we have this saying a lot that um traditions are in, in innovations uh, we we had that a lot last year i mean uh, two years ago i mean and that was a very common phrase that was was being talked about and, and in ways we see that now we see traditional food ways and traditional food cultures actually having um a really nice positive effect i mean you remember the story of the rice right that was like <laughs> I heard it so many times but not our audience so do you want to tell the rice story I think this is good please do <laughs> Um so whenever the story of the rice was my signature rice story um last last uh, two years ago when we went around talking about circular economy and I think what was really special about the story that we heard from somebody of uh, Indonesian um uh, descent in Toronto was that um food cultures play such a big role in in the way we interact with the food system and so the story goes like this uh, a woman once heard crying sounds coming from her field and she ran outside to find out where the crying sounds was coming from and uh, she she looked down and she realized the crying sounds were coming from unharvested rice being thrown and wasted on the ground so um uh don't waste your food or the rice will cry that's what uh, many mothers in in asian countries tell their children and this whole idea of the story about how us having empathy with fallen rice grains on the ground you know feeling that 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 the emotion of of rice and it it kind of actually being able to you know cry and and i think that later on as we grow up as adults those kind of traditions really have a big influence on how we subconsciously even just interact with our food or the food system yeah yeah definitely so with food forward india your plan was you to actually discover different states as well however then covid came and all this had to be reshaped So if people would like to follow um what kind of activities are you guys doing right now and in which way are you introducing these communities So obviously right now our research trips are put to a halt but that's not stopping us from exploring the food system we've been blessed with technology and an accessibility in in a lot of I mean yeah. so that's really great for us to connect with people like we're doing so now um so what what we've done with food forward india is we've taken a virtual route so we're doing virtual escapes and and these virtual activities um so we feature one state a week so people can get like a teaser into uh like or just like a little bit of like a taste of what the possibilities are when you explore the state uh so we do interviews with people we have videos that we share we have stories uh and we have um uh different uh from different parts of that food system so from different parts of either rural or or urban or tribal systems and and people talk about ingredients or people talk about their own food culture and, and this is a great way for um us to also showcase some of the people studying the food culture of that state or people from there who are trying to push and promote their own traditions so you can i mean if anyone is is interested um in food forward india you can follow us at food forward india on instagram <laughs> and we do these um uh we do these virtual escapes uh now every alternate week so actually this week is and we take a break with an ingredient so this week we are actually showcasing the mango we're talking about variety so apparently india has nearly a thousand varieties of mango can wow. you imagine that and and but commercially only 25 to 30 varieties are actually being grown and only 5 to 8% of those varieties are exported because um the reason is that retailers abroad only want a certain variety on their shelves because the commu- the, the people are familiar with that so but actually we have such delicious mangoes here that you know we would obviously love to share but the system works in a way that doesn't prevent that so the idea of talking about it showcasing making people aware um hopefully uh we can share our food culture with the world like that 
That's great. And uh, thinking about another um, other digital format of getting a bit more um, knowledge and experience from Elizabeth and Anush as well, uh, because let's be honest, uh, we have so much to talk about and our time is kind of running, um, uh, running off now. But um, basically, I'm not sure if you guys heard about it, but uh, we have this joint project with FAO. And in July, we will have our digital bootcamp. And the fact that we, we turn this into a digital um, session uh, for four weeks allows us to actually work with multiple local hosts. The local hosts in our perspective are the people who are part of a community all over the world. So Anush and Elizabeth are also leading one of the chapters. I am super excited to do some discoveries, global discoveries with them in July. So if you want to hear more about or know more about the digital boot camps or the physical boot camps, what will happen in person once we are again allowed to move, um, uh, then visit the website, um, the Future Food Academy website and uh, look at boot camps. Um, so now as a final question. So a lot of things has changed um, over the past months. Um, a lot of different um, aspects have been revealed about our food system. Uh, people change their consumption and procurement because they had to. Um, so how do you, how did your personal um, procurement change and what kind of work did you guys do um, to learn more about this? Um, yeah, so definitely things have really, really toppled over in the last two months. But what we've really, um, personally for me, like at home, we've definitely started to 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 look to more uh, shops, more closer to home, more closer to the, I mean, I'm not going to, local is, is very, I mean, Bangalore could be local, but more closer to the area that we live to understand, to even discover them. Uh, there was one amazing store that we didn't even know that existed and now we've we've bought we've started buying everything from there so the idea of just looking towards the immediate community mm -hmm. and seeing what the immediate community wants but also so obviously like on um so much has changed within our food systems and i think what's been really interesting and what change has really excited us is just the the thought uh, of it all right so people are asking more questions we are uh, doing more projects uh, people want to know more about um, or just to understand like how their food ways how can they get access to food and and that's making them more conscious about food ways so our, our last meetup so we do we do at edible issues we do these virtual meetups i mean they used to be non virtual but because of the situation and uh we 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 had on um we had uh, urban design collective um uh, on a meetup and they spoke about a small project that they did within a week which was to map the food system in chennai um and chennai is another uh, city in india um and um what they found they mapped the pre covid system they mapped the system during covid and they mapped the system post covid and they speculated or they said that these were the things that we'd like about the future. But what was really interesting is that how the supply chains have been disrupted during this time could still be a way for us uh, to move into the future. You know, we could take some uh, understandings or learning about the time about these times where we've resorted or we've 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 lent back on the local food system and and thus we've been food secure um, in in. In, in a way. So, uh, yeah, I think that's been really interesting just to kind of have so many of these conversations with people on on how the, the system has um, evolved in this way over such a short period of time. Of course, there are so many flaws within the system and there are so many people whose needs are not being met right now. And that's that's also a really important story. Um, but just the fact that people are asking more questions and people are, are being engaged more, I think that's that's been a really, uh, uh, really cool change for us to see. Um, yeah, and, and we continue to talk about the, the food system and how it's changing. So actually tomorrow we have a meetup uh, with Akash Murlidharan, who 
who has been cooking with vegetables uh, uh from his food system for the last 100 days and he has cooked with about 60 vegetables that he hasn't even repeated so completely different vegetables and the fact is that these amazing produce exist within your immediate food system and we just don't know because we don't have access or we don't know how to find we don't know how to cook and i think just the whole like, the fact of you know how, how do we get to know these things how do we how do we how do we how do we learn about it and yeah i think the whole, just asking questions and being more aware and yeah that's um, that's also what we hope for <laughs> and what we want to hope for the future so yeah <laughs> definitely i think we are in right especially these days uh we are definitely in a state where we have to listen we have to ask, ask questions and educate ourselves not only about food system issues but other um things happening around the world um so i think this is a crucial moment to to go and and learn more um oh, i'm getting a bit emotional about this um anyway what i wanted to say because we talked about your rice story um that i still remember your final sentence of the presentations what i heard hundreds of times during the global uh, mission is uh, that the future of food is at the end of our fork so with this um take away i let everyone go and continue your uh, their day elizabeth thank you so much it was a very thank insightful you. conversation um two more things for the audience to look up one is the article what uh, or interview what elizabeth uh, published on uh, mold uh, called mapping the effects of covid-19 um so that's one and then the second one if you would like to join their conversation tomorrow then follow edible issues and you will find all the links what you have to follow <laughs> to to register and um yeah the boot camps don't forget about the boot camps maybe this is something what you want to spend your july um four weeks in july with so um i will be back next tuesday with our next alum uh, alumni and uh, yeah thank you elizabeth thank Take you care. julia bye bye